Hi, welcome to my channel. My name's Lindsay and in this video I'm going to be doing a step-by-step -step tutorial of a watercolour squirrel. So I'm going to be showing you step-by-step -step how I painted this squirrel in layers. We're going to be making this nice and easy for you to follow along with. This is my little girl Sky. so she's about 12 weeks old now and she's a little cavapoo and she likes biting my hand. Hey! Hey! And licking my face as well. So we've only had her for about two weeks. <laughs> So she doesn't like to be left alone at all. So at the moment she's coaching with me in my bedroom and she's spending a lot of time with me while I paint and things like that. So she's gonna chill on the cushion next to me while I paint this tutorial. And that's why she's in this video. Hey, what are you doing? Be nice. <laughs> if you like watching this sort of thing, subscribe because I make lots of step-by-step -step tutorials on this channel. I'm focused on watercolour, so I'm a watercolour artist, like I said, and she is putting me off what I'm trying to say right now. If you want to learn more about watercolours, I also make tips and advice videos. Let's get stuck straight into this tutorial and I hope you enjoy it. I got my squirrel popped down onto the paper. What I did is I coloured on the back with some graphite. So I just used a pencil and then I flipped it over and they traced over the image. With the squirrel, I'm going to start off with the lightest value. So in the reference photo, I can see quite a bit of yellow. There's hints of yellow on his foot, a little bit around his leg area, some on his hand and also on his ear or just underneath his ear, around his eye and also a little bit in the tail as well. So I'm going to get that layer in first. For this painting I'm going to be using some burnt sienna. I'll also be using some yellow ochre and some lemon yellow. Some sepia and this is going to be for some of the darkest values. I've got some pearl orange as well and if you don't have this colour you just can use cadmium orange will work just fine for this. Next I'm going to use this little eradicator brush. I'm going to just use this to lift off some of the paint that's accidentally seeped into the white area. I'm going to take my big brush and then I'm going to apply a grey colour for the shadows. So I got this grey colour by mixing burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. You can darken this up with more pigment or you can add more water to make it lighter like I have here. You see I've got quite a pigmented dark version of that colour as well next to me. It all depends on what the ratio of the ultramarine to the burnt sienna is to what shade of grey you're going to get. If you put more burnt sienna in you're going to get more of a brown grey and I prefer at the moment to have more blue so I've got more of a blue grey here. I'm going to wet the squirrel's body. I'm going to leave his tail for now. I'm just going to focus on his body area. So I'm just using some clean water all over his body area. I'm going to avoid his feet as well because I'm not going to add any grey in there for now. And the only area I am going to avoid as well is around the eye area. So taking my grey mixture, I'm going to apply this shadow where I can see it on the reference photo. So there's a bit of shadow on his tummy area. It's quite a bit of shadow on his tummy area. I'm going to take it around his feet. There's a bit of a furry crevice here. So I'm going to try to create that. And then around his, the front of his tummy. There's a lovely little fluffy area in here so I decided to get that in. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring out some little flicks to make it look like fur. And also on the front of his tummy as well. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some water and I'm going to take out some of that paint there just to dilute it a little bit. Continuing to add the shadows, there's some shadows around his leg area. So there's a lovely little crease going on in his body here. So I'm going to get the shadow area here. I'm going to put that shadow colour on in there. I'm going to just add in a few little areas where I can see the shadow colour there around his nose at the front of his face here. So that shadow comes down, not all the way, it comes down about halfway down his face 
and then around his nose area. So we will darken up this little area here. But I'll just add a little bit of shadow there on his mouth. There's a nice dark area in here, so I'm just going to add that shadow colour in there as well. And bringing out a few little flicks too. There's a little bit behind his ear here. And then in his ear, around the edge of his ear too. And you can bring up some little hair flicks as well, the edge of your brush. Just use the tip of your brush. And then at the very bottom here, I'm also going to add a bit of shadow. And then rinsing my brush off, I'm just going to blend that edge out there. Make it nice and soft. While the rest of the squirrel dries, I'm going to paint in a little bit of yellow ochre onto the feet. I'm using a very diluted wash of the yellow ochre and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint in on the left hand side that shape there and then on the right hand side of the foot I'm going to paint in this shape. So I'm leaving a bit at the bottom white and then taking some concentrated sepia I'm just going to run the, that along my pencil mark so because it's concentrated it's not running down it's not running far, I only want it at the top of that foot. And I'm just going to run that down the edge and use a few little hair flicks. And I've got some burnt sienna here and I'm going to run that down this little crevice here. I've got some very diluted grey and I'm just going to pop that in as well. Because if you look carefully, not the whole of that foot is white. There are areas of grey as well. I'm going to do the same with this foot. So I'm going to paint the whole of this foot, or most of the whole of this foot, in the yellow ochre. I'm going to take it down the toes. I'm going to leave a few little areas free. So I'm going to paint those in grey. I'm working quite quickly because I do want to add burnt sienna onto the top of this. I'm just carefully following the shape of those toes. Then I've got burnt sienna on my brush. I'm going to drop that in while the paint is still wet. So you can see that I'm leaving little areas of the yellow ochre showing through. I've got some CPR on my brush now and it's quite concentrated. I'm just going to run that along this bottom edge here because there's a nice shadow and also here. Then I'm just going to run it down the edge of the toes to create a little gap where the toes separate. I've got some diluted grey on my brush now and I'm going to paint that into this area here. I'm also taking it onto the ends, creating some little hair shapes. I'm using a little bit of negative paint in here just to create some hair. There's also a grey area here. I'm going to do the same with these little hands here. So some very diluted yellow ochre. It was a bit too dark then, that's why I'm just spreading it out with some water. I've, dil I've diluted it a bit. And then taking the burnt sienna, I'm going to drop that in. 
I'm going to leave a little strip of highlight, so I'm going to paint that down this area here. I'm going to leave a little strip of highlight at the top of those fingers. Just going to take this opportunity to fix the shape of that little pore. Trying to get more of a. And then taking my sepia, I'm going to run that along the edge of those hands there. So just running it along the edge of the hand, the little pore. I love squirrels' little fingers. They're so cute, aren't they? Especially when you see them eating their little nuts. Love them. So sweet. Because I live in the UK in Britain, we get quite a few squirrels and they're grey squirrels in our country. So they're quite large and they are my kids are fascinated by them. They always have been. And um, my little boy used to call them squiggles when he was little. <laughs> so it's kind of a name that has stuck with me. My little girls tell me off when I call them squiggles. But I'm always saying it. I'm going to paint in the eye area now. So I've got some watered down sepia. And I'm going to paint that onto this area here. So I want to avoid the highlight. So this highlight is under here. So I'm going to paint that sepia coming around the side of his pupil. So I'm going to paint that around here. And the squirrel has a lovely oval shaped, like teardrop shaped eye. So I'm going to bring that up here. And then I'm going to try to leave a little bit of a highlight, just a little strip of highlight. And a little bit in the corner as well. And then I'm going to avoid the pupil too, the highlight in the pupil. The tiny little highlight there. I'm going to use a damp brush just to blend that edge out, just to soften it. And also this edge here. While the rest of the squirrel is drying, I'm going to use this opportunity to paint in the log. So I've got some clean water and we're going to keep this log nice and loose. So I'm going to just paint in some clean water. I don't want the log to be the focus. I do want the squirrel to be the focus and the main focus of the squirrel I want to be the tail and his cute little face. So I do want to just use some clean water and we're going to paint that all over the log area. And then I'm just going to take a few little colours that I've already used in the squirrel. So some yellow ochre. I'm just going to loosely paint it on really. I've got some ultramarine here and when it mixes with the yellow ochre it's going to create like a green colour. It's appeared into nothing. A bit of ultramarine there. So you can see how loose I'm being with this. I'm literally just dropping a few of the colours that I've already used. And then I've got my grey, my dark grey. I'm just going to run that along this edge here just to separate it in two parts. Ooh, it's got a little bit of a break in it. So he is standing on that log there. I'm going to add a bit of a shadow around his toes. So a little bit of shadow around his toe area just on the bottom. And then we're going to take the shadow underneath his bottom area and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flick some of those shadows up into his body, make it look like fair. 
not too much just a few little flicks still got the gray and I'm gonna just run a few little lines across the branch just to give it a bit of texture and I'm gonna drop some little water droplets in here and there so the tiny little water droplets and what will happen is that will push out the pigment and add some texture to the branch. I'm going to paint a watery wash of sepia over the body now. So I'm going to take some clean water and I'm just going to paint just in front of the tail. Avoiding the tail area so I'm just going to paint the squirrel's body. I'm going to avoid his eye area again so I'm just going to paint around that highlighted eye area. If you can hear anything in the background, my little dog is next to me and she's playing with her little donut teddy. <laughs> I've got some watered down sepia and I'm going to drop this in on a lot of the body. So I am going to paint in a little bit of yellow ochre and I'm going to also add a little bit of burnt sienna as well. So I'm going to paint that over a lot of the body. But like I said, I am going to drop in other colours as well as I go. So this is watered down sepia. This is going to cover the most of the squirrel's body. And I'm going to kind of avoid this little area between the ear. So we're going to avoid that area. Sort of yellow highlight in the middle there. So I'm going to leave that as well. It's also a lovely bright area around his face. So I'm going to just take that onto the top of his shoulder area. And down his arm. I'm going to drop a little bit at the bottom here and a little bit here as well just add in a small amount and I'm just going to dab in a few little bits I've got some yellow ochre on my brush now and I'm going to drop that into this area here and also just around his eye area here around his little the bottom of his ear so you can see I'm just using little stippling motions and also around his leg where that yellow area is quite bright and also we're going to take a little bit onto this yellow fur here oh the white fur sorry <laughs> and then underneath here I'm going to take a little bit onto his back area here just to brighten it up it's quite glowy this area here isn't it and then maybe a little bit on the back as well I've got some watered down yellow ochre now and I'm going to paint that onto the back of the ear here, so a little bit on the back, around the edge. I've got burnt sienna here and I'm going to just drop that into his face area here. So I'm just running that down the front of his face and then a little bit onto his nose area and around the bottom of his nose as well. Got a bit more of the burnt sienna and I'm going to drop that into the paw area. So keep that area a little bit soft. So there's a little bit of a red area here. And then I'm going to drop it down the back of his body. Just where his tail meets his body. And then just at the top of his head as well here. Quite a bit of his ear is red tinged. So I'm going to put in a little bit of that burnt sienna there as well and also on the top of his head it's a little bit coming off the top of his ear so I'm going to get that in I'm just going to paint that down the front there just not all the way just at the very top I'm going to paint in the tail now with some yellow ochre I've got a mid-range dilution so this is more like milk consistency and it's quite so it's got a bit more paint mixed into it and I'm just going to take a little bit onto the ends of his tail so I'm just going to paint a little bit onto the ends of his tail like I said just using my paintbrush really to flick up some little hair flicks so you can see that I'm really sort of just pushing down with my brush and then lifting up off at the end to get that nice wispy feel at the end I'm just going to blend those edges out here to really blend them in and just so we don't get a harsh edge and I'm just going to take that up to the body there we will cover this up a bit further on I'm going to just blend that edge out a little bit to keep it a little bit softer 
so I've just got some clean water on my brush. And this might seem a little bit harsh to you, but I'm taking a risk here. <laughs> So it's good to take a risk. So you can see that I'm just using some really nice pigmented yellow ochre and just flicking up the ends with my brush. Keep your brush nice and wet so that you can get a lovely point at the ends. And I'm going to make it those brush strokes a bit smaller, a bit shorter as we get to the bottom of his tail. I've just got a damp brush now and I'm going to blend that edge out there. I'm going to allow this layer to dry now. I wanted to add a little bit more to this branch area here. So I'm just going to wet this branch with some clean water. Got some ultramarine there and I'm just going to drop that in to a few little areas. Just using the tip of my brush. Then I've got the burnt sienna and I didn't want it that bright so I'm just going to blend that out to make it really diluted. It's a bit burnt sienna. You can see that I'm not covering the whole of the bottom of that branch. I am leaving some of the underlying layers showing through and a little bit of the sepia as well. I'm just going to paint around the edges of his claws and just underneath his bottom. Just taking some water droplets now and I'm going to drop those in. I'm going to apply some Pyrrhal Orange now, so I've got some clean water and I'm just going to paint that over the back of the squirrel's body, so I'm taking it around the back of his body, so avoiding painting onto his body with the water and I'm going to just paint the tail area, so this is just some clean water now, I'm going to take it all over the tail area I'm taking my Pyrrhal Orange, I do want this to be quite concentrated, so I've got quite concentrated paint on my brush and I'm just going to paint that onto the edge of the squirrel's body and dab it and just allow it to flow out. I'm going to wet the hand area here. Then I'm going to drop in some burnt sienna, so this is quite concentrated, it's got a little bit of water mixed into it to get it flowing, but it's nice and pigmented, and I'm just going to drop that into this little area here, so leaving that little strip of yellow at the top of his hand, I'm going to paint that around, and then I've got some dark sepia here, and I've just taken the water out of my brush as well so it doesn't spread too far and I'm just going to paint in that little crease area and also around the edge of his hands to separate the two little paws. I want to paint a dark mark in across there. I want to add a little bit more definition to the face. So I'm going to use some clean water again and the reason why I'm using clean water is I want to, to keep everything nice and soft so I'm just going to wet his face area carefully wetting around his eye and I'm going to avoid his ear I've got some burnt sienna here and I'm going to drop that into this little area here I'm just dabbing it on comes up a little bit further than what I first originally painted it. Darken up this little area here as well and I thought I would take it around the top of his ear too. Some nice dark hair flicks, some fuzzy little hair coming off the top of his ear which I think is so sweet. So I'm just using the tip of my brush just to flick up some little hair flicks there. And then the front of his face here needs to be separated from his ear so I'm going to paint down a little mark here. So this is just the burnt sienna that I'm painting down the front of his face. And I'm going to stop about there. Next I've got some sepia and it's 
quite dark so I've just rubbed it across my sticky pigment and I'm gonna run that down the top of the eye area there where there's a nice dark marking and then I'm also gonna take it down the front of his face here because if you have a look at the reference photo the very front of his face at the top of his head is quite dark also take a little bit around here just to the top of his nose I'm also going to add a little bit to the top of his ear here just using the tip of my brush again to flick up some little hair flicks then I'm going to paint in the nose and the nose is still wet so we're going to get fuzzy marks on the left hand side of his nose and then where I'm painting a hard edge uh, around the edge of his nose that's going to be a nice hard edge I'm not going all the way around his nose, I'm going to leave a little gap at the front I'm painting that on there and then there's a little marking down the front of his mouth area here and then I'm going to bring a little dark marking down here as well so this is going to give the shape of his little nose area I've just dipped my brush into some water and I'm so it's diluted and I'm just going to paint on a bit of a dark marking under his eye area here just using a damp brush there to blend that out a bit more got a little bit of burnt sienna and I'm going to drop that in there as well there are a few areas on the squirrel I just want to define so I'm going to apply a little bit of water to the top of his arm here following my pencil mark which is very faint at the moment and then taking some watered down sepia I'm just going to run that across my pencil mark there so that's going to define his little arm and create a bit of a shadow but it's going to be quite subtle what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the edge of my brush just to bring in some little hair flicks just a few little ones and I'm not going to make those hair flicks too big either I also want to take some water under his arm as well so again I'm just avoiding the top of his arm and I'm going to take that water underneath my pencil mark and I've got my sepia now I'm just going to run that along the edge of my pencil mark so you can see I'm just dabbing it on I'm not being too uniform and too straight with this mark because it is a bit furry and jagged so if I just dab it on then it's going to make it more irregular and make it look more like fur I'm just going to use the tip of my brush just to bring up some little hair flicks I have to admit I'm definitely not an expert on painting fur it's something that I really need to work on I'm going to paint some water onto this area here as well so just in this little crease and I've got my sepia again I'm going to just dab that onto this area here to create that little crease in his in the top of his leg and also a little bit of Payne's grey just to darken it up I'm going to use a damp brush just to blend this edge out here because I felt like it was a little bit too harsh I'm going to paint some burnt sienna around the ear now so just at the top of his ear and I'm just going to paint that across the top of his ear like this and down this area here and then because I want to keep that soft I'm just going to blend out those edges a bit blending out the edges a little bit just to keep them softer I'm going to wet the inside of his ear now and I'm going to add a little bit of yellow ochre so a little bit of yellow ochre in there and also some sepia so I'm going to just paint that sepia onto this area of his ear where there's a bit of a shadow I've got some pale quinacridone rose you can use permanent rose if you don't have quinacridones and I'm gonna just paint on this area here so there's a little bit of a pink area just underneath his ear and then using my damp brush I'm gonna blend that out I want to paint a second layer of yellow ochre onto the tail now because watercolor is quite transparent so once it dries it does dry lighter than what you expect it to and I've got some yellow ochre and I'm going to drop that onto his the back of his body so I'm going to allow that to bleed into the wet area of his tail and just 
flicking the edges out just to make them more flicky and I'm just going to paint that right onto the edge of his body to make it nice and thick, that paint a bit more dense I especially want to cover up the pencil mark here so I'm going to have a range of values here so we're going to get a lovely yellow colour showing through I'm just painting that on the back of his body I've got some sepia now and I want to also run that along the edge of the body so you can see I'm just taking it along the edge of his body and what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually bring up some of that colour into his bottom area so into his back you can see then that makes it look like fur and I'm going to do the same thing with the sepia, sepia as I did with the yellow ochre and just using my brush to pull out that paint and create little fuzzy flicks with my brush so this sepia that I'm using is not completely dark it's got some water mixed into it I'm going to run it along the edge of my turtle's body um, <laughs> sorry, the, I just recently painted a turtle that's why I've got a turtle on the brain um, I'm going to run it across the edge of my squirrel's body and then I'm going to just use the tip of my brush just to bring in some flicks just onto the dry paper and then using the edge of my brush just to bring out some flicks leaving the yellow underneath showing so you can use a nice dark concentration of the sepia next to the body because that area is nice and dark and then again just make it really un-uniform make some flicks go to the right, make some flicks go to the left because if you have a look at the reference photo those flicks, the, the fuzzy flicks of his tail are here, there and everywhere so they're facing in all different directions while working on this middle part while it's still wet you're going to have the edge of those flicks blending into the tail so you don't get harsh edges I'm going to wet this little arm area here because I want to bring this out a little bit more it looks a little bit flat at the moment so I'm going to paint some water onto the arm area and then also up his face a little bit I'm going to take some of that yellow ochre and just drop it into the bottom of his arm here just to give it a little bit of form, make it look not so flat. And then I've got the lemon yellow that I started with and I'm going to drop that into his hand area here to really brighten that area up. And then also around his eye area as well. Just felt like that needed brightening up that area a little bit more might also put a little bit towards his ear as well I've also got a little bit of burnt sienna and I'm going to drop that into this area here as well just using a damp brush just to take that colour out there that I accidentally plodded down I just want to say that this is my first squirrel I've ever painted so if you are thinking what on earth is she doing <laughs> I'm learning, I'm still learning to paint animals and I'm especially not very clued up with painting fur let's just put it that way so this is me trying my very best if you can do a much better job then that is amazing I would also love to hear how you got on with this tutorial I would love to hear from you in the comments I really love reading all your comments it helps me to know that there is actually a person behind this tutorial and there's a reason for me to keep doing this I've got some of the grey that I mixed up earlier and I'm going to drop that in so I just applied some water to my paper and then I've got some of the concentrated grey so this is the grey that we got from mixing the ultramarine blue with sienna so I'm just going to paint that onto the wet paper and allow it to bleed up there's a lovely dark marking 
at the bottom of his fur here and I'm also gonna just darken up this I've just dipped my brush in my water jar and I'm just gonna have a slightly more diluted version here I just took the paint out of my brush and I'm just gonna use my clean brush just to bring out some of those flicks bring out some of that color there so it's a bit lighter on the ends so it's lighter gray on the ends I'll also do the same with this area here. Some of those hairs, if you have a look closely, do come out quite a bit. I've also got that colour here and if I just zoom in for you so you can see what I'm doing, I'm going to work on this little area here between his hands. So there's a lovely dark area in between his hands here. So I'm going to paint that on there. Paint that lovely dark colour just in between his little paws and then we'll bring up some little here, flicks onto the dry paper. So I'm taking that underneath his little chin area. Here. And we're just going to bring up some little hair flicks just to make it nice and fuzzy on the ends. And there's a nice dark shadow at the top of his hand there, with a little paw. I'm going to paint in his little mouth area. I want to be careful that I don't touch that grey that I've just painted. So I'm just carefully applying some water, avoiding that grey area. So painting a little bit of clean water on the bottom of his mouth. And then I've got some sepia and I don't want to paint a straight line. Mouths on animals are never a straight line anyway. They are usually covered with fur or so they are quite irregular so I don't want to paint that too uniform and to be honest mouths are something that I really avoid <laughs> until the last minute because I'm a little bit scared to do them sometimes. I've just got a damp brush and I'm just going to make sure that I bring that mouth area just to the end of his face. I've got some yellow ochre on my brush and I just wanted to paint in this area of his nose. I'm going to paint around that burnt sienna that I've already put down. I felt like his nose needed that shape in there so that yellow ochre can come around the front of his nose as well and I'll leave the middle of his nose light. I've also got some pale yellow ochre here on my brush and I'm going to paint in this little cheek area here so just above his mouth. There's a bit of a yellow area or a bit of a brownish area there. I just want to kind of fill that area in. I'm just scrubbing back and forth with my brush. You can use a damp brush to blend that out. I'm going to paint in the eye area now. So I've got some really concentrated Payne's Grey on my brush. And I want to paint in this pupil area. So I'm avoiding the sepia that I've already put down. I'm going to avoid around the edge. I want to keep that sepia there, but I'm going to paint in this middle part of the eye. So first of all, I'm going to get the general shape of the eye in. So it's a lovely sort of almond shaped eye, isn't it? It's lovely shape and it that dark color does come up quite far at the top of the eye so I do try to make my subjects eyes look as realistic as possible even if I do use a loose style in other areas I do try to keep the eyes quite realistic because I love working on eyes and I just think the eye of an animal is what actually makes that animal pop. I've got that grey there, avoiding the little highlight in the middle of his pupil. That grey area actually extends a little bit out into his eye, so got that nice sort of, there's two pointed shapes within that pupil. So I did like that on the eye, so I decided to put that in. And then you've got some little marks coming off the eye. So you've got a little line coming under the eye slightly. And then some tiny little 
use the very edge of your brush to bring in some tiny little marks but do try to keep that highlight there the white area just make it ever so subtle I'm going to paint another layer onto the tail now. So I've got some clean water and I'm going to paint that onto the tail. So I'm just wetting the whole of the tail area again. Now I've got some concentrated burnt sienna again. And I'm going to drop that into the edge. And I'm going to drop that into the tail close to the body. You can see that I've accidentally just painted a little bit onto the body of the squirrel. So I'm just going to take a damp brush and just blend that out a little bit. And just let it bleed out into the water. Where the tail touches the body, I want that to be the most concentrated area. And the most colourful as well. So I want that area to be really nice and bright and stand out. Just like it is in the reference photo. I'm going to use the tip of my brush just to bring out... A few little flicks just with the edge of my brush. We will use the tip of my brush just to bring out some flicks and I'm going to stop there. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to use the tip of my brush and I'm going to bring some little hair flicks onto the body because you can see some of that hair is actually coming onto the body of the squirrel, so I'm not going to put too much on. I've got the Pyrrhal Orange now and I'm just going to drop that into a few little areas just to really brighten it up. So we did put that Pyrrhal Orange down to start with, but it did get a bit covered up with some of the layers. So I'm going to drop that in just to a few little areas to brighten them up. I've got my smaller size 6 brush and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take some Payne's Grey and I'm just going to flick some of that Payne's Grey into the ends of the tail and just let it bleed out within the water. You can see some of the tail actually has darker ends. So I'm just going to flick a few little hair flicks with the darker colour not making it very uniform. I'm going to bring some into the middle of the tail as well. A few shorter ones. Some of that Prane's Grey can sit near where that burnt sienna is. So there's a dark area here. And then some of that Prane's Grey actually comes into the tail as well. The tail area here to create separation. I'm going to take some of that onto the ends here. So I'm just being very quick with my brush strokes. I'm not being too uniform either. Bring some into the middle of the tail as well so that it doesn't just sit on the ends of the tail. You can make some little brush marks smaller as well. So just use little flicks. And then we're really going to darken up this area here, darkening up that edge there. So this very back part here is quite dark. And then some of that grey does come into this orange area as well, this red area. And then I'm going to bring some of that Payne's grey close to the squirrel's body because it's quite dark there. I'm going to bring some of it out create separation. Bring some of it into the squirrel's body. So you can see that I'm still working on the wet paper. So the paper is still nice and wet. You do want to work on this while the paper is still wet. You want to get a nice soft feel. I'm just applying that Payne's Grey very close to the body where there's a bit of a shadow. And I'm not going to run it all along. I'm going to leave little gaps in between. Some of them I'm going to bring up like this. So it looks like there's a bit of a separation in the fur. And I was really unsure how to actually approach this. If you can do a better job than me, then let me know. But I'm still learning. I'm always quite honest like that on this channel. I'm self-taught, so I've only been painting with watercolour for two years. But in those two years, I have learned quite a lot. And I do like to pass on what I've learned through my tutorials. I've got some of that Payne's Grey now, and where the paint has started to dry, 
I can get some darker marks. There's a lovely shadow under here, so I'm just dip my brush into my paint jar and I'm going to paint that shadow in there. Don't worry if a little bit goes over the ear. I'm just using a damp brush just to blend that out there. And then I've got some concentrated, very concentrated Payne's Grey here and I'm going to really darken up this shadow just underneath the ear or on top of the ear there and bring some of that into the hair. I'm not particularly liking these strokes here so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just blend those out a little bit so that we can still see them. This is just some clean water. You can still see them but they're not so harsh. Also on the back of the squirrel here. And then I've got some sepia on my brush and I'm going to run that on the edge of the inside of the ear and allow it to bleed down. So this is going to make the ear look more like an ear. <laughs> it's going to give the ear more of a, a depth to it so it doesn't look just like a flat blob on the page. So I'm going to run that down this area here. A little marking on the inside here as well. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some Payne's Grey and I'm going to drop that in there as well. Just a little bit just to darken it up. And a little bit on the edges here just to darken that area there. I'm just taking my clean brush now and I'm going to sop up some of that because I think it's spreading a bit too far. I've got a little bit of water on my brush now and I'm also going to paint in this area under here. So there's a little pencil mark which is quite covered up at the moment underneath the ear which curves. So it's behind the eye and underneath the ear and I'm just going to paint along that pencil mark on the one side with some clean water. And then taking my sepia, I'm going to run that along my pencil mark so it bleeds out into the water. So we're going to get a soft edge on the one side and then a hard edge on the other side where it's dry. I'm also going to take it up the back here where there's a bit of a separation in the fur. I've got my sepia and I'm going to just paint in the general gist of the ear, the rest of the ear. So you can see there's some dark markings. And then taking a clean damp brush, just blend the edges out. I'm going to take some yellow ochre and drop it in behind the ear here because it is quite a nice yellow mark in there. And then you can take a damp brush just to blend the edges out. I'm going to fill in part of the nose area with some Payne's Grey. So there are two really dark markings. There is one which kind of runs up the front of his mouth. So coming up from his mouth towards his nostril. And then I'm going to paint in this dark marking that is on his nose area. So it kind of forms a little U shape. And then there's also a dark marking coming down the front of his nose. So I'm going to paint in a little squiggle there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just scrub my brush back and forth. Just to create a little scruffy mark in there at the front of his nose. This area here could also do with a few little dark markings. So I've just got some Payne's Grey on my brush. I'm just going to darken up this area here. I can use the edge of my brush to flick up some little hair flicks because it is quite fuzzy here. Just be really careful when you're using a dark colour like this that you are very careful because this is going to be very difficult to lift off if you make a mistake. So just using the very tip of my brush. I'm using very fine little strokes with my brush as you can see. And I'm just bringing some little markings down there, just some little flex really with the edge of my brush. And then I've just dipped my brush into my water jar and I'm just going to add a bit of a darker mark in here. Just felt like that area there needed darkening up a tiny bit. I've got a bit of sepia now and I'm just going to add a little dark mark in here. I just felt like this area here needed a slightly darker part. I've just got a damp brush now and I'm just blending down some of that colour so it's not so harsh. I also wanted to darken up this little crease where the hand, where his little hand is. 
So I've got some sepia and I'm just going to use my brush just to create some little hair flicks and create a little separation in that hand area. I just felt like that really needed a bit of darkening up. So I've got some quite dark sepia here on my brush. And I'm just applying that there. I'm going to apply a little shadow to the back now. So I've just got some clean water. So I'm just painting some clean water across the back and about halfway down towards his arms. And then I've got some watered down sepia and all I'm going to do is just paint along the edge of the squirrel's back just to create a bit of a shadow because the, the tail is supposed to be coming over his body slightly so that area is going to be in shadow so I thought I would just add a little bit of brown there just to darken it up a little bit just so you've got not such a harsh cut off where the tail sort of comes over and then there's just the body that's just one flat colour so I've got slightly darker pigment now and also at the top of his ears as well I'm going to paint in the whiskers now. So I've got this long rigger brush. This is a size one and it's by Princeton Neptune. It's got a long ends to it so it's really good for painting in lines and fur and whiskers which is what I'm going to use this for. I got some yellow ochre on my brush and I'm going to paint in the yellow ochre right at the bottom where I can see on the reference photo the light is catching those whiskers. So I'm just going to paint a few little fair whiskers just at the bottom here so I'm just pulling off a few little whisker shapes next I've got my sepia and I'm going to use my sepia to paint in some whisker shapes as well so what I'm doing is I'm just using the tip of my brush and I'm making those shapes quite fluid and what I mean by fluid is they're not jagged they're very smooth looking you want to be very careful how you paint these so I'm going to start from his little nose area here and I'm just going to paint in a few little long whisker shapes. So we're just using the tip of our brush and bringing those whiskers down into a finer point so they can be slightly thicker on the end. Try not to make them too thick. And then we're just going to use a swift motion. Make sure that your brush is nice and wet so that you're not getting a broken line at the end where your brush becomes drier. I'm also going to paint some of these whiskers in Payne's Grey, so I've just got some Payne's Grey on my brush. And I'm literally using just the lightest of pressure on my brush, so that I don't get a thick line. So I'm just pressing very lightly. Some of those whiskers come over his hand area. Some of those whiskers start at the bottom of his nose as well. So if you have a look, some of those whiskers are quite clumped together as well. I'm making sure that I keep my brush nice and wet because you can see some of those whiskers have become a little bit drier on the ends. So it's created a dry brush whisker. <laughs> but what I've done is I've gone over with some wetter paint just to fill those in. We're going to make some of those whiskers a bit smaller. Some of those whiskers can cross each other as well. Bringing some of those whiskers on the top of his nose upwards. There is one on top of his head as well. So that's obviously coming from one end of his nose and going upwards. So I am going to get that in. Paint that on. I might actually paint a few little wispy ones as well. I can curve some of them. One or two in here as well. So maybe make some a bit darker at the bottom here and there is my finished squirrel i hope you enjoyed this tutorial this was a little bit of a long one so i hope you didn't get too frustrated have a lovely rest of your day happy painting and let me know in the comments box below if you really enjoyed this tutorial so i can make more also if you followed along with me today i would love to know how you got on with this have a lovely rest of your day you'll find the reference photo down below for you and i'll see you in my next video Bye.